Good afternoon everyone, welcome to another paint cast. Today we're going to be working a little bit on Molg the Ancient from the Trollblood faction of Privateer Press. What I'm going to be doing today is um, working a little bit with oil paints and using the oil paints specifically to add shade and highlight to the stone that is on Molg. Most of the flesh tone is already done with him. Um, and I've started work on the cloak, which is, um, as the customers requested, uh, going to be painted to look like a Signar battle flag. And then, of course, I need to do the uh, club as well and finish up the base. So um, a little bit of uh, discussion real quick on why, uh, what colors I'm going to be using here, what uh, method I'm going to use to apply the oil paints, and um, that sort of a thing. Um, Molg, I've painted in, in traditional uh, troll blood colors, okay, and with all the cool that's going on here, with all the cool temperature of the colors that's going on, especially with the addition of the blue um, sash that he has on around him here, um, I really didn't want to go with a, a cool gray stone color. I needed to do something to, to provide a little more contrast. Um, and so I'm going with more of a brownish gray or a warmish gray tone to get the result that I'm looking for. Um, you can really see the, the contrast that this creates right here in this area, right around the chest, um, how this warmer gray contrasts really nicely against the very cool blues and grays that are going on there. It's a little bit more of a muted theme, but um, it definitely works. So. The stone was all base coated in uh, P3 Bastion Gray, and then it was washed with um, Army Painter um, Strong Tone, and then let dry and then coated with a um, acrylic semi-gloss coat. So that's why there's a little bit of a sheen coming off of it. Uh, and that's just to protect the layer underneath of uh, when I go to apply the oil paints. Um, <clears throat> why am I using oil paints on this particular model? Why have I chosen that instead of brush painting? I think oil paints are cool to work with. It's a it's a different way to kind of experiment with different techniques, learn different things, and um, kind of keep yourself from getting stuck in a rut. That's one reason why I'm doing it. The other reason why I'm doing it is um, how I, the method I'm going to be using to apply these paints to create the effect that I'm after is also pretty quick. So I should be able to move through this fairly fast. Um, and then also uh, oil paints are a very nice, deep, saturated color. So it's going to uh, provide some rich color to uh, what otherwise could be a very bland looking surface with the stones. Um, if you have never used oil paints before, this is probably a, 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 um, a good way to start using them, um, the technique that I'm going to show you. Um, if you have used oil paints before, this might be a little simplified for you. I don't know where you're, where you're at or where you're coming from on it, but um, either way, it's something new to try and, and, and a, a, an arrow to add to your quiver of um, techniques to use when you're painting. So um, I'll be coming back to oil painting again in the future, and I'm going to be doing a much more thorough presentation on it, you know, put up a PowerPoint, that kind of thing. Um, for now, I'm just trying to keep it light and simple, so that way it's not uh, overly burdensome for those who are watching or wanting to try this type of technique for the first time. So if you're going to do oil painting on miniatures, uh, the first thing I recommend that you're going to need, obviously, is a paper towel. Okay, um, You're going to want to use that to, to uh, clean your brushes off with from time to time. I take uh, P3 blister packets and cut them in half and use the flat back, ple black back piece as a palette for my oil paints. Um, I've got a ton of them and it's cheap, it's easy. I like to put them though on top of a paper towel because it creates a white background as opposed to putting it directly over like say my work surface here where it might be a little more difficult to, to discern the color. Let me actually uh, focus in a little bit more on my wet palette, on my palette here so you can uh, see a little better what I'm going to be doing. So you're going to need those two things. Uh, the next thing you're going to need are an assort assortment of brushes. These are all old brushes that I've used. Um, this one actually is a sable brush here. 
uh, but it's an old one. Um, these are synthetics, the blue ones are synthetics. Just different sizes, different shapes. Um, what I'm basically going to be showing you guys today is, is really just a glorified dry brushing. So um, I'll be using probably these more flat, flat brushes for that. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is some odorless mineral spirits. And then, of course, the oil paint that you want to use. Um, I like to use the Windsor & Newton um, oil paints. Um, I find that the color on them and the quality on them is uh, very high. The color is very rich. Um, and the uh, oil itself is, is, the paint itself is very smooth. So um, I've got an assortment of about 10 different colors that I work with. They're just kind of the basic colors. Um, show them to you real quick here. I've got a, a burnt umber, which is a very dark brown. I've got a cobalt blue, which is um, uh, what I use for cooling colors down a little more. Uh, black, ivory black. Oxide of chromium, which is a nice green shade. Titanium white. Cadmium red. Cadmium yellow. Yellow ochre. And burnt sienna. Um, so I, I try to kind of color cover the the basic primary colors with my oil, paint, oil paints. You really don't need to go much beyond that. Um, I mean, if you wanted to keep it simple, you could just do black, white, and then the three primary colors: uh, blue. What are they? Uh, green, red, and uh, yellow, right? I think. Anyway, I'm uh, kind of doing that one on the fly there. Yeah, I think the primary colors are uh, green. Yeah green, red, and yellow. Anyway, um, no, blue, yellow, and red. Gosh, I had to look at my color wheel to reference that. Blue, yellow, red. So if you did a black, a white, a blue, a yellow, and a red, that would cover a lot of the, um, the spectrum because you can mix up the kind of custom colors that you want to mix up. I also have a couple of these colors, um, which are just uh, the 502 series. They're a specific modeling oil paint color used for like doing filters on models, color modulation, oil stains, things like that. And I've got a couple of uh, tubes of these that, I've, that I use for specific application, mostly when it comes to painting model um, tanks, cars, things like that. So anyway, uh, on mold here, what, we wanted, what I want to do is I want to mix up a color that's going to work for the, the shade, you know, for these rocks, that um, isn't going to detract too much from the... Um, color that's already there, um, but also still provide a nice decent contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few colors on my palette here. Put a dab of black on there. I'm going to put a dab of the burnt umber on the palette. Let's see, we'll put a little bit of uh, the titanium white on here. Uh, we'll put a touch of green on here too, I think. And we'll start with that and see where, see where it takes us. Um, you know, really, when it comes to oil paints, too, when you're doing this type of stuff, um, it's pretty pretty intuitive uh, with, with mixing the colors. Um, there's not uh, hard, fast recipes with this kind of stuff. You just kind of have to, to eyeball it until you, you get the shade that you, uh, you want to have. So um, the other thing you need to do is get yourself a small mixing cup. Okay. And let's put a little bit of mineral spirits in that cup. So you got a touch of it there. Don't need a lot, just a little bit. Um, so I'll take uh, one of my brushes here, and I'm just going to start um, mixing a color, uh, the shade color first. I'm going to grab a 
small glob of the burnt umber. I'm going to add just the tiniest amount of white to that. I'm going to add a touch of black to that. And then a touch of the green as well. And we'll mix that up. What I'm trying to get is a darkened version of the Bastion Gray. And that's looking a little brown. Here's the Bastion Gray for for reference. Okay, so it's a little brown, a little, little more brown than I would like. So I'm going to bring a little more white into the mix. Not too much because I don't want to overpower it. That's looking a little better. And bring just a little more green into it. That's going more the direction I want. A little more green now. If you feel like the, the paint is overly lumpy or a little too thick while you're mixing it, just add a dot of the uh, a touch of the mineral spirits to it. There we go. That's that's about what I want. Now, next thing you want to do is load that brush up a bit, and we're just gonna let me um, move that over now that I don't need to do that. Let me bring the focus here on Molg. And I'm just going to start working some of that oil paint just right there in those cracks of where I want that shade. So I can already tell, looking at this against the surface of the, of the Bastion Gray, is it's not dark enough. I wanted a little more contrast there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come a little more, get a little more black, and just mix a little more black into it. And this is one of the beauties of working with oil paints, is I can just apply this directly over what I just applied, and not, not worry about uh, colors drying wrong, uh, colors not matching, because it's all going to be blended together here in just a second. So I'm adding that darker color in there now. Not really, as you can see, I'm not really too concerned about keeping it between the lines or making it look pretty at this point because what I'm going to be doing is, is like I said really just a, a glorified dry brushing okay let me stop that for a minute and show you now what we're going to do next thing I want to do is I'm going to take a flat brush wide flat brush that's uh, been used for a lot of dry brushing it's fairly soft and then I'm just going to lightly ever so lightly just kind of brush softly over that oil and I'm just slowly blending and softly blending the edge between that oil paint and the base coat that is on mold And you can already see the contrast that that provides on the stone and where that's going. I could probably even go darker, to be honest. Um, in fact, let me um, take a little bit of the burnt umber, a little bit of the black, 
Just give me a really, really nice dark brown there. Show you the kind of contrast we can get. Put a dab of that right there. And then, again, just kind of slowly blend that up. Add some in there. Now every little, every uh, few minutes as you're doing this, you want to take your your brush that you've been using to blend and kind of wipe it off on a towel. Don't don't use it in the mineral spirits because you're you want your your blending brush to be nice and dry. Okay, as soon as you put mineral spirits in that, you're gonna start spreading that oil paint around um, instead of feathering it. Okay, um, this really is a true uh, dry brush technique and a very legitimate way to do it. All right, and there you can start to see the the contrast building on those stones. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth on these. take a look at that you can see how quickly I'm moving but yet how how smooth those transitions are I'm um, I think I'm seeing out of the corner of my eye just some uh, people in, ch in chat talking um, usually there's no one in chat on these day broadcasts that I do when I do them, but uh, just in case there is today, um, I will be looking up here in just a minute to answer any questions that are that are in chat. Uh, I typically answer the questions and stuff uh, at the end of the broadcast or you know in intermittent times. So if I don't respond to a question right away in chat, it's just because I haven't seen it yet. Um, it's this is multitasking, folks. Producing a video, painting a miniature, and teaching how to do it all at the same time. So it's uh, a lot going on here. Sorry if I pulled off camera there for a second, guys. My father-in-law just came over and didn't realize what I was. He didn't realize I was down here doing this and came in and started talking. So I was uh, had to quickly mute the mic and keep working. So sorry for the little glitch there. And uh, yes, you're right. This is not Centurion Part Three. Um, 
I forgot to uh, update that title so I'll definitely make sure and do that next time So this is going to be thinned out just a little bit there for some of these tighter spots here. Okay, so that took all of about um, maybe eight minutes, eight and a half minutes to get that blending and that contrast going. So you can see when you're using oil paints in this manner, it, it does go quite quite quick. Uh, so let me take a second here and take a look at the chat and see what questions we might have. Um, let's see here. Got a, quite a few people in chat today. That's great. If you guys have questions, make sure and put them up, and I will be uh, taking the time to answer them here as I'm slowly going through this. Um, let's see here. Kier, Kieran Snary, oh gosh, I probably butcher that. Uh, he's just saying hi. He was on the PP forums the other day asking some questions about airbrushing. I'm glad you made it today, buddy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get back into to painting. And yes, I do need to uh, to change that title, but I'm not going to change it uh, mid mid broadcast like this. I don't think that is uh, going to be a good idea. So what I'm going to do now is just focus more on applying this uh, airbrush, or excuse me, this oil wash, oil uh, paint to a little bit more of the tighter detail places, and then we'll do some uh, highlighting and uh, show you how that how that goes. If you're coming in late to the broadcast. I am demonstrating today how to use oil paints on a miniature. Uh, it's just a real, real simple, quick demonstration of it. Um, I'm going to be doing a more thorough one in the future. This is more for just, um, it's actually really kind of a beginner's technique to be honest, because uh, it really is just, just dry brushing. It doesn't tend to work so well on really small areas. But when you're doing nice broad areas like this, rocks, stones, uh, panels, things like that, uh, you can really get um, get some nice, smooth, beautiful uh, transitions going. In fact, I'll show you guys some pictures as I get to the end of the broadcast here that uh, are actual miniatures I painted entirely with oils, or you know at least 90% of of which with oils, and uh, some of the results that you can get when you when you do that. What I'll probably do too, once this model, um, once the oil paints are dry, is um, I'll actually uh, um, go in with a paintbrush and some acrylic paint and just clean up some of these shadows even a little bit more and really refine them more. Uh, but you know, in the meantime, this just keeps it really, really fast and, and really quick. What I'm what I'm doing here. And it looks good in the end. You know, once it's uh, dull coated and and sealed, um, it really does look great. quick guys
Okay. I switched the title on there for you. Thanks, Trevor, for the uh, for the heads up on that. I appreciate it. Um, Plarzoid's asking, how am I switching brushes while talking at the same time? What's holding my other brush? I'm just really talented like that, and I can do that. <laughs> Actually, what I'm doing is holding the brush, um, the end of the the brush with the uh, tip of my teeth and talking through my teeth. So that's how I'm doing that. I want to get a camera set up eventually at some point that uh, has uh, is focused on me because painting isn't all just about the palette. Painting isn't all just about the the brush use. I mean, sometimes you're using other parts of your your face or body, and people are interested in wanting to know how to do that. So. So one of these days you guys will come into a paint cast and you'll see my big bearded mug and uh, never want to tune in again. Actually, thinking for all the shadows here, we're getting pretty, pretty close to to being done. Some of these smaller stones like this, I'm probably going to just come in with a paintbrush and acrylic paints, and mix a color that matches, and get you know get some of that that shading done. Alright. I think that's looking pretty good. I like how that looks. Nice, soft, smooth blends. Yeah, I think we're good on that. Let's, uh, let's move into some highlighting now. Yeah, let's move into some highlighting now. So we'll set that aside. Um, for highlighting, you are going to need to use a different brush. If you use the brush you used for shading, you're going to actually bring that uh, that highlight color down too far, and you won't get enough contrast out of it. So, um, so you're going to want to use a different brush for for the highlighting and the shading. Um, you can't with this particular technique. You can't simply just take the the highlight the the shading brush you were using and clean it and use that to highlight the mineral spirits they sit in the brush for a while until they evapor evaporate and if that brush is too wet what we just did here on Molg won't work at all and so in fact for right now I'm not even going to clean this brush because I'm probably going to have to come back after I do the shading and um, uh, re re uh, define and apply some of these highlights so so I don't want to even clean this yet because I'm probably going to be coming back to use it. Uh, for the highlight color, what we're going to do, and let me um, zoom in on this here and uh, show you what we're mixing up. Keep my towel under me so you guys can see. Um, I'm just going to be using the, using the white. We're just going to be adding white in. And I'm not going to add white um, you know, globally. I'm just going to kind of add it in the edge here, in the periphery. And we're, there's about a bastion gray color there. Now moving up to the white of it. And just kind of kind of keep mixing that in. Bring a little bit more of the base color in there. Get a touch of uh, mineral spirits. Bring a little more of the white in. There we go. It's starting to look pretty good. Okay. So we got ourselves a nice range of highlight color there. Don't spend a lot of money, guys, on, on brushes that you use for this part, this type of work, because you're going to go through them very quickly, and um, 
painting with oils is, is kind of harsh. So um, now here's what it, here's what we're going to do. Okay, with mold, um, we're going to want some of these highlights to be rather um, rather tight and controlled. So um, we're going to apply them very in a very small manner. So um, just kind of pulling it along that edge there. Okay. And then this is where I like to use this angled flat brush. And I'm just using the, the tip of the brush right there. And I'm going to slowly and gently start blending that. And softening it up. blending it with a little bit of that color that was still on the surface and and there you go you have a highlighted soft highlighted bit of rock there all right and I think I'm gonna actually pull from a little bit of a, the darker side of that highlight and just kinda add that on the top here Again, I'm not too worried about how it looks. I'm just getting the paint on the area. And now, coming back with the blending brush, slowly softening that, blending it. smoothing it out to oh, off camera there sorry guys to work that that highlight color in and there you can see how it looks and the sheen that you see, the, the glossy effect that, that you see going on, um, I'm going to be putting a dull coat on, on this model once the oil paint dries a little bit. You know, I'll give the oil paint a, a day or so to set, and then I'll cover it, I'll clear coat it with some uh, testers lacquer, dull coat lacquer, and... Um, that'll take all this sheen off and it will it, you know and this is something you do need to know about oil paints it will also soft, soften these blends a little bit uh, sometimes if you're not careful it softens them a little too much and then you actually have to go in with a with a uh, a brush and acrylic paint and and kinda re reapply some of those highlights usually that's where you see the problem with is with the highlights not necessarily with the shading um, but what's nice on something like this with stone is you know you can add some some veins or some marble in uh, with those highlights really easy and really create some cool effects and um, you know no one's gonna know that you used the oil paints uh, or you know changed it up and and uh, added those acrylics on top or anything like that you know they're just gonna they're just gonna see the final product which is gonna just look amazing. And so as you can see just softly blending those highlights in. Really easy stuff once you get the hang of it. Uh, and you can move uh, as I've demonstrated here very quickly over surfaces and uh, you know speed things up quite a bit um, maybe it's a catch-22 because the drying does take a while but um, you know it's just like it's all about what you're you know what you're interested in what kind of effect you're going for and what kind of time you want to put in
Okay. The other thing you can do too after you apply the, the oil coat, or excuse me, the, uh, the dull coat on, on a surface like this, is you can also use inks to um, glaze the surface, you know, saturate the color a little more so it's not quite so soft. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit here, give you guys a little bit of a wider angle. And you can see uh, you can see how mold is looking, how those stones are looking. And uh, I'm probably 30 minutes of total time on that now, as far as uh, uh, shadow to, to highlight. So it does go does go pretty quick when you're working with oils. Once you you know once you get the hang of it. Just reapplying some of the highlights again that I'd missed the first time I went around. You know, and, and this is, um, you know, I don't want to create a false impression here. This technique isn't, isn't the answer for every, every painting uh, problem, okay? Um, this works better with some colors, this works better with, with uh, achieving some desired outcomes over others. Um, so it's not, uh, this isn't always necessarily a, a go-to uh, technique for, hey, let's blend it and highlight it with oil paints. Um, you do kind of need to trust your experience on that, you know, and as you do more painting, you'll, you'll get that experience. Um, but not every um, every model is going to benefit from, um, or every color going to benefit from being painted this way. So now, actually, I'm glad this 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 happened here. Let me zoom in on this area and show you what I'm talking about. Right here on the shoulder, I applied too much of the white paint. Okay, so when I went to to uh, smooth it out, um, it's just creating too strong of a highlight. Okay glad this happened because um, I can show you guys how to correct this. You want to pull off as much as you can with the brush, just kind of dry brushing that off. Okay. You see what I've done there? And then take your paint applicator, your paint, the, the brush you're using to apply the paint with, go back and get some of the, the darker color and you'll just apply that darker color in those cracks, reestablish that uh, that shape that shadow that you had there to start with. A little bit more, and you're just kind of blending on the surface here with this and um, cleaning up any of those hard lines that you left and, and restoring some of that shadow color that was back, that, that got lost from uh, applying too much, too much highlight at one time. And there we go, we're back to roughly where we started. So, zoom back out. And um, set mold here for just a second. I want to show you guys some pictures of a miniature that I painted a while back using pretty much oil paints the whole whole way through. Give me a second here to pull it up in my account. And this is the wonderful thing that I'm finding out about with Twitch um, and OBS that you know I can do what's called screen capture and um, pull a picture up on my my computer and then show it to you guys uh, on the stream which is really really kinda neat
kind of excited about that. I was playing with that the other night in one of my one of my broadcasts, and it was uh, it was pretty cool. So um, let me just find the album here. Give me just one second, guys. Okay, and here we go. Let me uh, share this screen with you now. Okay, there you go. You can see that right there. That is a um, War Machine uh, Cador Devastator that I painted. Uh, this is probably about two years ago now. Um, with the exception of the rivets that you see on the armor there uh, and the metallics, everything else was done with oils. Um, that gradient from the, the dark to the light was achieved with the oils. The red was all done with oils and then the shading and the highlighting on that as well. Um, so it's uh, you can really do some, some cool things with it once you, you get familiar with using it. Um, there's another angle of it there and you can see the shadow and the highlight a bit better. Um, I think as a painter I've improved a lot since this photo, um, but um, it still demonstrates how you can get some really nice, soft, subtle contrast and blend when you're, when you're using those oil paints. There's another view there. Um, the color does flatten out a little bit. If I was to redo this again today, I would probably go back and put a red ink on top of these these red areas just to saturate the color a little bit more. Um, yeah, the war dog that I'd done, the reds were done with, with oil paints. Not the best photos. There's a battle group that I did. There's the juggernaut. It was all oil paints. Uh, um, Butcher here was painted all in oil paint as well. Uh, same with the face and everything. So that was a, a really cool thing. So gives you guys an idea of, of, of some of the things that you can do with oils. Um, the cloak here, Yuri's cloak, that was all done in oils. Um, so yeah, so let me uh, close this off now. And um, we can get back to work. Just wanted to show you guys though what uh, what you can expect though when you're working with oils. Um, Donny Osmendias is asking, aside from the issue with smaller areas, what are some of the challenges that come with using oil versus acrylic? That's a, I, I'm not quite sure how to take that question, Donnie, to be honest, um, because you know acrylic has just as many challenges as oil does. They're just a different set of challenges. Um, one thing you get with oil paints that you don't get with acrylics is the odor. Oil paints stink, and um, you got to deal with that. Um, the other thing is, is uh, oil paints tend to be take a long time to dry. Um, there are ways to uh, work around that. Uh, you can use a, a, a dehydrator uh, to, to to clean up the or speed up the uh, the dry time. Um, I have had some success, mixed results really, um, applying lacquer thinner directly over wet oil paint. Um, so you know, just the they all have their unique challenges. Um, I think uh, painters tend to be uh, intimidated by working with oil paints. I don't. I don't think they're necessarily any more intimidating than any other paint. It's just um, a different set of skills that you have to learn to develop. And if you have the right tools, and if you're willing to experiment and and um, live with some of the mistakes that you might make, or um, accept, you know suboptimal results those first few times. In other words, keep your expectations realistic. Um, I think oil paints can be a, a terrific way to, um, to enhance your skills as a painter and, uh, and really develop and grow in some new ways. And that's really what uh, these paint casts are all about, is uh, helping, uh, helping people be better painters. So I hope that answers your question, Donnie. If not, uh, tough luck. You only get one answer on this show. <laughs> Just kidding. Ask away, bud, if you got him.
It's being asked in chat right now too what brushes I use on oil paints. Um, because I don't use the oil paints in a typical artist type fashion on canvas type thing, I buy the cheapest brushes I can. I don't really haven't really noticed one way or another if uh, synthetic or, or oil, I mean synthetic or natural makes much of a difference. Um, for what I'm doing it doesn't really seem to uh, matter. So, um, And I go through the brushes very quick because um, I'm hard on them when I'm using them, using them in this manner. So yeah, it's just whatever you can buy. This, this blue handled one here came in a pack of like six brushes that I bought at Walmart for like two dollars. So um, this white one you see down here and the white one in my hand they were old acrylic brushes that I used a couple years ago. So, you know, whatever works. for That's the nice thing about this particular technique is um, it's very easy to do and really doesn't require, other than the, what you need for the actual oil paint, doesn't require a lot of specialized um, tools. Let's come over to the other arm now. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know either, um, I did upload this morning my last paint cast that I did the other night which was on airbrushing and it was a great paint cast a lot of really good questions answered a um, lot of good work that was done so if you haven't subscribed already to my youtube channel head over there and check it out because it's got some great videos over there it's got that airbrushing video over there and um, you guys can watch that help you get started with airbrushing if, if uh, that's the direction you're wanting to head. It's a good, uh, good resource to look at. Also, if you have questions about anything you see here, you can always email me directly at redmodeling at gmail.com and uh, be happy to answer your question. Most likely I would answer it on air. Uh, Unless, of course, you didn't want your question answered on air. Yeah, these smaller the stones here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pick those up with a brush when I. Um, after this model is sealed. Probably would use some kind of mixture of P3 Umbral Umber and Bastion Gray to recreate this. Uh, just looking at it, that's what I would I would think it would be. So uh, let's get some highlight done now and uh, move on with that.
just applying the highlight color now not being particularly careful about where it's applying since it's all going to be blended in anyway there's a technique that you can do with oil paints um, I've done it on a lot of scale model miniatures um, tanks and whatnot in fact uh, on the P P3 forums and also on the discount games uh, incorporated blog uh, under the hobby corner I've done a couple of um, tutorials on on how to use oil paints and and on one of those tutorials I used a um, a big uh, a mecha uh, 135 scale mecha to demonstrate uh, a technique called uh, dot filtering and it's really cool that something you can do with oils what you do is you you get all the the shading all the highlighting done on the surface all completely finished and then you seal the model really well with uh, with a clear coat and then you take random colors of uh, oil paint whites, reds, greens, yellows um, you know if you want to create more of a cool effect you know you stick to the blues and the greens purples things like that if you want to create more of a warm effect you go with uh, brighter greens, yellows, uh, reds that kind of stuff anyway you then you take these this oil paint and you put the dots just kind of all over the surface and then you take a um, paintbrush that uh, has has a little bit of odor, odorless mineral spirits on it and you just start gently pulling those dots up and down into each other and what it does is it creates a really cool subtle um, discoloration on the surface um, I've been thinking about trying it on a on a Cador army I, I picked up the, the Cador all-in-one box and uh, I've kind of been playing around with what kind of color scheme I would use and um, I would definitely want to go with more of a military type fill for them and uh, something in a gray or something like that and and that was one of the ideas I was thinking so I don't know you may see something like that before too long actually it'll be a while I got a lot of stuff to do between now and before I start that project so okay well other than the the small rocks um, we're about done with Molg there is um, not much more that I need to do on those stones at this point with the oil. Um, the stones here, I'm going to paint those by hand and highlight and shade those by hand, uh, or with acrylic paint rather. And after I seal this model, I'm also going to um, come back in with some acrylics and uh, redefine some things. Like this is a good example right here, the top of the stone. You see, if you look at it, it's just kind of globally highlighted and shaded and you don't really have that delineation between the highlight and the shadow from the different sides so what I'll probably do is use some acrylic paint to really build the highlight kind of along an edge here and here and here just to create more of that um, border between the different sides so that uh, you get a little bit more depth out of the out of the highlight and the shading there so um, so what I'm going to do is uh, we'll go ahead and um, I'll be done with working on mold for now I am going to continue broadcasting but I do need to take about a five minute break to um, reset my table surface here um, and uh, set up a painting for uh, acrylics what I'm going to be working on for the next few minutes or for the next hour or so is the um, finishing this guy up the Forge World Avatar and uh, what I need to finish on this guy is I need to get the uh, mane that goes on top of his helmet here uh, airbrushed so I'm going to be working on that uh, the cloak here is about 90 percent done um, I just need to get the gems done here and get the backside of it uh, base coated. 
Uh, I also need to get this hand here finished along with the spear finished and um, I repositioned the arm slightly um, and if, because of that I need to uh, clean up uh, this area right in here where I had remounted everything and then this guy's about done once I get the jewels done so um, this will be the next project I'm going to work on but like I say I'm going to take about a five minute break so I'm going to go back to my um, about to start image and let that uh, stream for just a, a few minutes while I reset everything um, but in the meantime if you guys have any questions feel free to put them up in chat and when I come back in about five minutes I will answer those questions and um, uh, we'll just keep working here so um, hang tight don't go anywhere because um, I'm not going anywhere I'm just taking a break for a minute to reset so I'll be back in, in about five guys